So, everybody awake? Everybody happy? Very good, very good. So, what if I tell you that there is a world where you can hyperscale your advertising budget with visibility, with security, and with speed? But when you try to do so, you're going to see, especially in 2023, that uh, we're most likely going to face these media buying problems. ROAS goes super low when we push the budget. We do the wrong scaling when we push on campaigns that have amazing ROAS in the ads manager, but in reality, it's over tracking. You're also going to see changing macro environment. On a random Sunday, CPM doubles. Then we have the war, we have inflation, CPM weird changes. A bunch of problems. Risk your business if you have a brand. Risk losing clients if you tell them, I'm not getting results now because Facebook, you know, now it's shit. So all in all, it's getting pretty tough. But today we're here to uncover the matrix, to show you behind the scenes, to show you what we have access to. And in order to allow you to hyperscale budget really, really quick, how I'm doing it and how he's seeing all the clients, big brands are doing it. So before we start, those are our Instagrams. It's going to be useful for you to later ask questions. And also, if you are going to upload any stories, um, you're going to be able to tag us. We're going to repost. And we're going to let the metrics see what we're doing here. So this is going in five, four, three, two. Let's go. So everything we're going to be talking about is going to be based on, first things first, 750000 in ad spend last month. That was like a record. So that's what I'm going to try to share with you today, what I'm doing here with the clients, and also um, display what I'm getting uh, from the in-person meta events that are private, I'm going to those ones. So this is cool that I'm here and I can bring you um, access to those learnings. Um, and this is really cool, but the problem here is that I don't have aggregated data of hundreds of brands. I'm limited to like 10 brands that I work with in between the agency, the consulting. So I have really quick access to data, feedback. I'm testing all the new releases, but my problem here is, again, aggregated data. And that's the reason why Fabian's here. Yes, and we have the advantage at OneTrack that we see a lot of brands working globally. Like we see people in e-commerce, we see people in the lead generation business, and we can see also the international big players and we can see the small players. So we are able to see basically behind all the matrix, all the data, so what's working, what is not working. And in general, um, we have to look at one thing. The metrics. <laughs> the matrix is always the problem because we always think that stuff is right, but it isn't. And when we look at the data, um, especially from new clients, we usually see a trend that around 75 to like 89% of all ad budget they have is probably wasted in their ads analytics and what they do with all their optimizations in the ads manager. And since Mark Twain already knows and says, it's not the things that you know that fuck you up, yeah, it, it's, it's the things you think they are true, but they aren't which fuck you up. And in the case of advertising and budgeting, it's usually the stuff you do when you put money on an ad. You think it's working, but in reality, it isn't. And for that, I just want to take you basically on an overview over all three ad channels. I want to take you into one track data. I want to show you what we can see yeah, from a big data perspective behind the curtain. Yeah, we want to give you the red pill out of this ad buying misery of having wrong analytics and wrong tracking. Yeah, and want to show you how are the changes from a year to year date at the moment. Yeah, and what is working, what is not working. So we will start now with a rough market overview. Yeah, and what we will do is just like show you how everything is like distributed on all the channels. We take only the three big channels. We take Facebook, like now Meta. We take Google. We take TikTok. And as you can see, there are big changes from year to year. Is there a laser pointer with this? Yes. Here you see the 2022 data. Here is the 2023. Yeah. So basically, Meta is losing ad budget on a year to year level. Google is gaining a lot from it. Who changed from Meta to Google in the last year in advertising or increased with Meta budget, their Google budget? Hands up. Anybody? Interesting. You're against the statistics. So the, the thing is there, what you have. Did anybody switch from Meta to TikTok? So you're basically all still met by on, on Meta, right? That's a good thing because on Meta, there's a lot of optimizations you can do. Manel will show you much more tricks than I can do in the Ads Manager. But what we will see is also like a shift of ad budget. And it's going on and on. And what I want to show you 
especially is also the CPM. CPMs are generally always in comparison to the global ad budget. You saw, for example, Facebook is dropping ad budget, also the CPM is dropping on Facebook. Yeah? Around 20% in e-commerce and lead on an average basis year to year. Then you have a race in Google CPMs. This is because multiple big advertisers shift away from Facebook and go to Google, so it makes a rise yeah, in the CPMs on Google for most of the people we can track right now. And then you see TikTok, which is also a little bit a lift yeah, in CPM costs. But the thing there is, if you compare the lift of TikTok to the amount of growth they have in ad budget, it's 32%, it's still not very expensive in CPM. So there is basically a hidden gem. There's an opportunity where you can scale your ads easier. Now we have a big macro trends. I sit one of our big data guys on this statistics and I said to him, find some interesting statistic about Facebook and what they do with the ad, but ad buyers, what the ad buyers cannot see when they look into the ads manager. And the big problem with the ad buyers is that when they look in the ads manager, they look in their own silo. Nobody's looking outside. All the problems are in your funnel, in your ads manager, in your tracking, and everybody's just looking there. But what we found out, it's a correlation, not a causation maybe, I'm just pointing it out from the beginning, yeah, is you see in this blue line on the top, this is the stock price of Facebook. Who checked the stock price of Facebook in the last couple of months? Hands up. Uh, okay, a couple of you. Then you have, interestingly, in purple, you have the average CPM on Facebook over all our track clients. And then there is a mistake by our graphic designer. Yeah, it's not days, it's hours. Yeah. And the thing is, the green line you can see on the bottom is the average time it takes to get ads approved in a partner ad account. So you can see all the lines are running basically parallel. This means there is a strong correlation at least. Yeah? If the Facebook stock is down, they get cheaper and faster in the ads approval. If the Facebook stock gets up, they get more expensive, they make more money. And people think, oh, my Facebook ads are not working. Everything is getting more expensive. Yeah, maybe it's because there's a macro trend you're missing. Yeah? And this is the stuff you have to have a look on. And I just wanted to share it with you because I think it's a very interesting thing most of us marketers don't see. Yeah? And since we are not looking out of the ads manager, there could be also other things we are overseeing. So, Then we have a special occasion in the last two weeks. We had the meta meltdown. Even here, it's much more visible. Just look at it. This was the average CPM, uh, ROS and CPM, ROS in purple, blue CPM, um, on lead and e-commerce businesses. And we saw a really, really big problem. As you can see, we have a drop around 150% and a rise in ROAS uh, in CPM around 120%. This is just because Facebook made a change to the algorithm. Nobody knows why, nobody knows if you get your money back. And some of our people were like also spending crazily. Like they had the ad budget, for example, 10,000 per day, big spenders like Manel or something, and they just spend like all the 10K in like one and a half hours on a day. And it's just gone, and you pay for it. Yeah, so you should be a little bit aware with, with it because there's big problems coming with big budgets. And if you're having big clients, yeah, you can be in a pretty like hot water, which is not even your own fault. Nobody saw it coming. Yeah. Just a little joke on the side, can't worry about metrics if you don't measure anything. That's how most people operate. You hear it in the other presentation. There's different ways to measure stuff. But the main thing is what is working right now on Meta, Google, and TikTok. And since Manel is the expert for Meta, I will just focus now on Google and TikTok. And we start with Google. What's working on Google today? In general, don't have these expectations and come with this budget to the table. Yeah? It's not pretty good for you because Google as everything else is favoring, of course, big ad spends yeah, and big ad spenders. In general, we read a lot about at the moment about, the, I think, the beginning of the year they were new, yeah, the Performance Max campaigns, which were rolling out also end of the year last year. And we see them as a very effective strategy in a ROAS-driven business, like, for example, an e-commerce business, yeah, to scale yeah, your ad spend. And the thing is, all our highest scaling clients are mostly like to 60, 65% just using performance max campaigns on Google combined with some two, three other strategies, but that's the main one. The problem is with Google performance max is that we are all performance driven marketers. Performance driven marketers tend to turn off all the ads you see yeah, 
which are not working. And the problem with Google Max campaigns, Performance Max campaigns, is that if you have a PMAX campaign and it's not working for 10 days, what do most of the people do? They turn it off. Yeah? And with this, you give them not the opportunity to optimize over a long period of time. And what we see in our data, that you have to have usually 11 days minimum, even if you're losing money in these 11 days, to have them running. That's a very important point. And another thing is with Performance Max campaigns, they rely heavily, heavily on postback data because they are basically an algorithm which is optimizing on everything you try to do with the data you give them. Yeah? And we heard before that data in general is a big problem. Here's a PMAX campaign where you can just see basically how it's optimizing. Yeah? That's from the last year, it's one of the first ones because you can see it very easily. You see in red the cost, you see in blue the conversions. Yeah? And what they did, they tried to scale it and it was optimizing running a little bit. And here you see, yeah, basically after 14 days, it was the point, okay, now I found my sweet spot, now we can scale and now we can be stable. And this is what happens usually with PMAX campaigns. Keep spending, keep doing it, don't overspend because it doesn't mean just because your yeah, PMAX campaign is not performing, it doesn't mean you're a good marketer if you keep it on. You have to check it, you have to test it, and you have to learn it, and you have to distinguish between is it my campaign which is not working or am I not giving the algorithm enough time to improve? Yeah? And if you look here, for example, like by the way, crazy conversion rate, um, but you, you see it here, that's a Google Ads campaign on BMAX basis without an ad data postback. You can see the lines are basically running like they want. This means you're not giving the platform the data they want to optimize on. You see, for example, here, they try to optimize on something. Maybe a guy in a blue shirt who's buying from you, and the campaign is, is optimizing on guys in red shirts yeah, as prospecting clients. So they will not buy from you. And this is a problem if you do it the wrong way. If you do it the right way, you can see the same stuff this year. Everything is running, optimizing somehow, but it's not scaling, it's not performant. Here it breaks down a little bit. But here you can see there's a point where suddenly it starts performing almost parallelly. It's scaling, the conversions are constantly over the clicks. Yeah, this means you have a rising conversion rate, by the way, in the data. And this is basically where, for example, the, the clients turned on a big, uh, a big ad post back from us, from OneTrack, and so it was able to scale very smoothly. In general, also consistency is key with Google. Yeah? Don't dump your money very easily yeah? with a big budget in the first month. Go slowly, test, have a stable base. Yeah? Manel will speak about this in Meta later. Have a little bit spending in the beginning, get it warmed up, for example, and then have a good base to scale up. In general, like use seven months, it's a little bit long period, yeah? but the data usually says five to seven months if you have a brand new ad account. Yeah? But it also depends what you do with the ad data. Like if you have an empty account, not doing anything, not scaling, there could be the problems that you have like wrong data or like that you have like missing statistical points. So you're just not hitting the clients you want to hit. So basically what are the three key takeaways to do? First of all, use PMAX campaigns longer than 11 days, please. See that there is a range. Usually it's like between 11 and 17 days what you should do. Then. Second, get your conversions and ad tracking in place, please. That's the most important stuff. In all our clients, which we have with OneTrack, we see a lot of problems in their tracking setups. Like even the basic ones, like for example, Google Analytics 4, yeah, use GA4, but what people mostly not telling GA4 is like quite complicated and it's not a solution for everything. Yeah, there's stuff missing. So what you have to do is like, you don't make mistakes in the tracking. We've seen ad accounts which have no tracking at all. Like they put some conversion event, they do some stuff and try to figure out if what they do is like right or wrong. Yeah? So this is the three points. What's working on TikTok? On TikTok, generally TikTok globally at the moment makes up around 4% of overall budget spend. Yeah? Which means also there is a lot of room for improvement. Second one, you have the highest percentage of new customer acquisitions. Yeah? And when we look at our clients in the last point, we can already see that they are using like 13% of our clients are using TikTok, so we are basically double what the market says. But still, there is room for improvement. And what I can tell you from a market 
data perspective is TikTok is one of the market data strongest platforms we see in development. Like they have incredible amount of ads, uh, events, they have incredible amounts of research on that. And I will make a prediction here. I will say TikTok will be the first ones who come out with uh, individual ads, like ads which will have your forename, for example, which will say, hey, Manel, you're interested in buying this chain and we'll use Manel's favorite colors in the ad. Yeah? And we'll do the same individually on the basis for every one of us. So we will target us as an individual, not as an aggregated perspective. But the problem is, why is TikTok also good for you right now? We see, when we look at our ad data and tracking data, we see a lot of stuff what micro and mega influencers are doing. Mega influencers are people over 1 million, micro influencers are people under 15K. And we can see that there's a very good amount of traction in organic and post data on TikTok, even for micro influencers, and it's quite higher. Maybe somebody of you already started a TikTok channel and found out that if you have like a consistent amount of reels over a consistent amount of time, you're performing very well as long as you're breaking this 15K mark. You get every four or five reels, you get a reel which has 100,000 views, 200,000 views or something like that. Yeah? Mega influencers also get stuff, but TikTok is at the moment the most engaging level. People sending their TikToks, the young guys, like the target group between 15 and 22, yeah, they love TikTok. And there is one thing why this is so successful, and you see it here. The young people, like brands which sell to people under 30, 79%, almost 80, prefer brands that get TikTok because TikTok is kind of cool. There's even new business models coming up at the moment, which is like real agencies. Who has, knows any guy with a real agency yet? Yeah, there, <laughs> a lot, yeah. Which is basically a short form video agency. This is coming. We also see if you put TikTok in the marketing mix, we can see in some e-commerce businesses at 2.1x, like double in ROAS. And in general, what we have, you have also a brand affinity increase. The brand affinity increase is, for example, that we can see in the tracking data that when people have paid and organic touch points in your customer journey, that we can see that the amount of data between two touch points is getting smaller if there is a TikTok touch point in the first five touch points they had with your brand. Very interesting insight. So they, they convert faster they, and they get more brand awareness. This means, for example, also, if we have TikToks in a general marketing mix, we can see that people are using it and interacting with your brand more. Like you have more conversions, more clicks on landing pages, more clicks on your product sites. They check just more about your brand because they're interested. And usually the entrance channel is TikTok and of course, Instagram, because they have the same short foot video format. Yeah, that's a very important part. So what does the data tell you? Four takeaways. TikTok is the new cool. Use it. Yeah, don't get crazy. Don't ban it in your marketing mix. We're not the USA. So the next one is it's a very excellent platform for cold scaling from small to medium clients. And it's because of the amount of ad data you can collect. Because, for example, if you use like a tool like OneTrack, we can capture a lot of ad data. It doesn't matter where it comes from. As soon as you generate the click, it goes on your landing page, we can take the data. Yeah? And that's the reason why you can collect, for a cheap amount of money, a lot amount of ad data. And what do you do if your lead generation business is pretty easy, polarize, yeah? get a little bit crazy if you want to have leads, because then the TikToks go viral. And if you're an e-commerce, explain and show your product. Yeah? Show what you're doing, show what you have. And this is basically what's working on TikTok, but TikTok are not the only ones who love to take your money. So we go on with Manel and I think now Mita. <laughs> All right, good, good, good stuff. So we're gonna uh, break it into different blocks. This time I'm gonna do it a little bit different. What I do typically in the masterminds is flash campaigns, scaling, 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 techniques, media buying. We're gonna have that in the end. I'm gonna show you what's working for me, at this point of the year in, in evergreen campaigns, um, media buying hacks, decision making at scale. Uh, but I also want to share with you where is Meta heading to? What are the new releases that are coming? New stuff that they want to launch, new things that they say this is working. We're going to talk Advantage Plus. So it's like new stuff that's fresh right now. So yeah, again, everything that I'm going to be sharing is going to be based on, um, first of all, a lot of ad spend, but also uh, what I never share is what I get behind the scenes like the meetings with Meta every two weeks. Yeah, I am with them team in Madrid, so they give you 
the little insights. Um, they also send me a bunch of reports, March report, and it's all the new products from Meta. Some are useful, some are like, you know. Um, and then I also get to go to in-person events. So yeah, in there you learn a lot. And I think this is a pretty cool opportunity for me to just bring this to the mastermind. And also, yeah, uh, what I'm learning from this heavy ads um, per month, also learn new things. So yeah, uh, those are gonna be the two uh, blocks. Let's go with the first one. So with, this was the event, um, typical corporate event. There were like five presentations, many of them um, shit, but there was one that was super useful. Um, this was the conclusion, but if we want to put it in, in practical um, terms, I'm going to recommend all of you to be running Advantage Plus shopping campaigns. So just for me to read, um, basically what these Advantage Plus campaigns, who's running Advantage Plus right now? Yeah. You have to do it, guys. So Advantage Plus, uh, they don't rely on pixel data. They rely on um, at artificial intelligence. It's pretty, pretty cool. This event was on February 15th. Okay, 60 days, I got to spend 180K already on all Advantage Plus campaigns just for one ad account. Um, 2.88 ROAS, over half a million in revenue in two months. It works. There are some technicalities that I'm gonna share with you at the end, but it really works, so it is worth it. And then they're giving a lot of ad credit tests. They're giving you money to test and validate this in different countries. Ask for it if you have a Facebook rep, ask for it. They're giving you 25% or they're funding the full test. So highly, highly recommend you ask for it. If it works, keep it. If they give you the credit and it doesn't work, just stop it, but it's free money. Also another thing, MMM, it's coming. Um, I don't like this. So this is marketing mix modeling. And whenever I see Meta is doing some modeling, especially with conversions and reports and everything, not too good, I don't like it. Um, to me, it basically means they're gonna measure with statistical modeling, econometrics, what draws you have. So it's a real data. For this, I suggest you use any external tracking sources. The way that I'm using them, I'm always double checking. So basically with this, you get to avoid scaling the wrong campaigns. What I've seen is, and you're gonna see in this one, I have massive over tracking many, many times. Like I have, I have 800 checkouts and 900 purchases, which doesn't make sense. You should have 800 checkouts, 400 purchases. So if I come here super hyped, I'm like, I have 900 purchases, I'm gonna scale this. It doesn't happen in all accounts, but I see it many, many times in few ad sets, new ad sets, it's risky. So for that, example in this one, with, uh, I would say, good percentage of my clients were using uh, one track specifically. What I do in this case is I'm always comparing what Facebook's telling me with what this platform's telling me. And whenever I see that they are, there are big similarities, for example, in this case, orders 12 and 12, 12, 9, 22, 9, not too good. So these two are good. These two I'm confident into scaling them because when I'm pushing 10, 15K a day in one ad account, I need to have some kind of security, not only Meta, because I know Meta wants my money. This, I don't like it that much. 22 to 7, 2.05 Meta, 0 0.44 uh, one track. Mm, I don't know. So in terms, in times of marketing mix modeling, modeled conversions, all this, you want to use something like that. And here's the same thing. Whenever I see orders are really close to each other, I scale. When they are really different, I'm like, I'm not sure. So I'd rather be conservative at this level of budgets. Then um, last release from Meta. This, if you do lead gen, it's going to be massive. If you do e-com, also it's going to be massive. This is not ROAS oriented conversions. This is reminder ads. So this is coming very, very soon. It will come first in the US, then it's gonna drop in, in uh, Europe. This is basically gonna be the new style of email marketing. Why? Because the delivery is gonna be way easier and the open rate is gonna be you yourself just receiving a notification. The way you're gonna sign up is you will click on an ad, click on a button, remind me, and then the brand is gonna be able to send you notifications. Where's the trick? First mover advantage. When I sign up to brands, to brands at the beginning, I will be, as a user, I will be super hyped. Oh yeah, let me know about this festival. Oh yeah, let me know about this product launch of this fashion store that I like the t-shirts, yeah. When I sign up to 20, I'm gonna be happy. When they're bombarding me with notifications, I'm not gonna be happy and I'm not gonna sign up to any other one. So you really have to move, move fast with this. As soon as you see that it's live, launch it. Whatever you have, think in advance. If you are the last one, nobody's gonna sign up because they are already fucking burned of notifications from brands trying to sell them, trying to do this, do that, so be fast. Let's go to media buying hacks. Um, 
First one, we all know these ones. Well, before this, there are going to be like two main things. How to scale lowering the risk and how, like what format in the ads I'm using to scale that. But the first two are just going to be a few tips on how to lower your risk. When I have a winning ad, what do I do? Yeah, you're going to push the budget, but it's most likely going to break. What can you do to avoid it? This is the first one. This I call it maturing the ads, improving them, just making them better. Imagine I have this ad. This ad was launched in July 2022. I have this ad. It's a winning ad. You test it, typical thing, ABO. You see really good ROAS. I'm going to go here for reading. Really good ROAS, and you say, yeah, I'm going to scale the budget. I'm going to go from 50 a day to 150 a day. Yeah, let's go. Um, 50, 150, maybe it's going to support it. Cool. When you've been running it for three months, you burn it. How can you keep this ad, or how did I keep this ad from July 2022 until now? It's still running. Um, one of the things that I did, this thing, this thing right here. So we have clients putting comments in the ads. The brand is replying to all of them. This sometimes happens naturally. Other times we just ask for it and they just put it super happy. Yeah, of course I can come in here and give you a review. What, what brands focus on is reviews in the website, which is fantastic. You're giving social proof. It increases your conversion rate, fantastic. But you have to think only 1% of people are gonna click on your ad. Only 1%, that's the CTR, that's the average CTR. If only 1% click, there's 99% that have not seen any kind of social proof. If I have this, I win over anybody having like ads with one fucking like. This gives me consistency in the ads. This is the same thing. Look at this. Two fucking million views on an Instagram ad. Do you think this wins over an ad that's brand new, fresh? Yeah. Do you think, do you think this is gonna give me more consistency? Yes. Am I still running this ad? Yes. And it was posted at the end of 2022, still running. So when you want to scale the ad, of course, push the budget, duplicate the ad set, fantastic. But if you want to solidify that ad, do this. Second one is when, when do you want to increase the budget? Um, this I learned during Black Friday. I was doing the wave surfing that I've talked about many other times. I want to basically increase my budget in the peak hours of the day, especially during big campaigns. I was doing the same in Mother's Day. Mother's Day on a Sunday, fantastic day. Uh, when do I want to push? I want to push at 3 p.m. because then where people are home, they're still buying. Cool. What about Evergreen? Should I still apply Evergreen? Um, yeah. So basically what you do is you go to Shopify, Analytics, Reports, and then you put, for example, year to date. It's a pretty cool because this way you're going to exclude Black Friday and you're going to have like a super pick on a Friday random. Um, year to date, no comparison by day of the week. So here I have whole 2023, all my sales in different days. So you can see that Sunday is my pick. I do like 1.1 million aggregated sales on Sundays. And then on Tuesdays, I'm making 800K aggregated. When do you think I'm going to raise my budget? of my winning ads with comments on a Sunday, 100%. So on Sundays, I do work. Same thing here, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Am I gonna raise the budget like crazy on a Wednesday? No, I mean, sometimes I do push on a Wednesday. Yeah, winning ads, just push them. But the risk that I wanna take of going aggressive, wait, huh? I wanna do it on Sunday, because then I have three days that are good, lower risk, fantastic. Same thing here, Sunday, Monday, and Saturday. So Friday night or Saturday morning, I'm going to push the budget and then I'm going to decrease it on Tuesday. And you just go by week. Pretty cool. Then let's do scaling techniques and how I'm making decisions at high scale. So two ways of doing this that I'm using. Before doing any of this, you have to know your weekly wave. You have to have winning creatives, some comments. You have scaled already a little bit because in here we're trying to go like full push. Um, cost cap CBOs. So basically, in this one, I have spent 386k with one account, 3.17 ROAS, 1.2 million. Pretty cool. Um, these are just cost cap CBOs. Who's running cost cap CBOs? Yeah, fantastic. So um, this is my setup. We can talk about later what setup you have, and maybe it's even useful for me. But this is my setup. One campaign. I have two to three ad sets. Each ad set is going to have a different cost cap. So it's typically like cost cap 40 and 45. You need to test cost caps before going into here. So in ABO, your testing campaign, you test what's my winning cost cap. When I'm overbidding, when I'm underbidding, 30, 40, 55. I have cost caps that are 90. 
and they give me CPAs of 25, 35, 45. So you just gotta test. Once you have your winning cost caps, your winning creatives, go into cost cap CBOs. And then a bunch of shopping campaigns that some of you are already using, this is new, already same thing. This, I've been running it for less time, but spend 196K, 2.86 ROAS at scale, uh, half a million in uh, revenue. Pretty cool as well, and this is the way that I'm using it. One campaign, one ad set, at least 10 ads per ad set, minimum. And here's the trick, these campaigns are doing prospecting and retargeting at the same time. So when you set it up, Facebook does it automatically. When you set it up, you have to have two to three retargeting ads. What is this? DPAs. Dynamic carousels with a retargeting copy. Put them in there, two to three ads in this, in this ad set, and then the rest is prospecting. Works fantastic. And yeah, same thing. When you try to push like this, and this is mainly done with this. Because then if, if I see crazy ROAS in the Ads Manager, it's fantastic for me, and it reflects what I see in Shopify, but I don't want to take the risk of only looking in the Ads Manager. And this platform is super conservative, like what you see here, these are low ROAS. Low, low, low ROAS. Because they only attribute you when it's been directly from the ad, perf and I love it, because I'm scaling the right thing. Cool. So yeah, uh, and now we're gonna have a quick, quick, quick case study. Senor Kike, welcome here and share. Hello, um, just real quick, this just to kind of match it all up. Um, yeah. This is our stats from last month. So if you want to go to the next slide, just to kind of give you my insight. So we've been running a lot of uh, Advantage Plus campaigns on Facebook. If you guys aren't doing it, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, with, from what I've seen, when it comes down to CDMs and CPCs, the costs are really, really good. I was actually talking to Manel yesterday, and some campaigns do perform like really, really well and are stable. You can scale them easily. For me, some others don't perform that well, but definitely if you're in e-commerce and you're running Facebook ads, I highly recommend you test these campaigns. Um, because you can also set up a specific budget of what it goes to retarget, right? Yeah. Uh, existing customers. And uh, the second insight I want to give is that know your days. Uh, also, as Manel was saying, for me, for example, my business, uh, we know Fridays are just not that good of days, right? But then on the other hand, we know that Monday, uh, Tuesday, we have the best days of the week, right? So that's where we scale our budgets and then we lower them, right? And good, good, good. Next slide, please. Yeah. We've also been using uh, one track because, um, well, as probably all of you guys know, uh, if we look at specifically Facebook data, we've seen massive, massive, massive over-reporting. So some, day, some days it was super crazy. So I use one track for many different things, but one of them to really see where the sales are coming from, right? To see the actual data, not even on uh, Facebook only, but on Google also. From what I've seen, Google is closer to having a, a decent data, let's say, but Facebook, uh, from what I've seen, is just super awesome. So I highly recommend you try uh, one of these tools because you're gonna know your uh, perform the budget that you spend on performance, how it works. But also, uh, one uh, really good thing that I like is uh, I can also see Davio as what I'm using for email marketing. We can see organic sales, we can see direct sales. So this actually really helps us uh, when we are scaling or you know depending on if we're running a flash sale. Uh, we can really, really see uh, where the sales are coming from. So this uh, very interesting things like that. Good, 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 good. Round of applause for Kike. Few takeaways, and then we can do some Q&A in case you have questions. So uh, you want to go first? So basically, what are the key takeaways? Key takeaways from my side are basically, first of all, use an advanced ad data postback. Yeah, make sure if you spend marketing dollars that Facebook and Google gets the data which you're buying from them. Very important one. Second key takeaway from my side is basically use some kind of analytic software. Choose whatever you want, what you feel good with. Yeah, but in general, like find hidden gems because there is like example of Manel or Kike. There are ads which have like, for example, 
very high ROAS, but they're not performing, you're scaling them, you lose money. And on the other hand, you have ads which are performing really bad in the ads manager, very good in the tracking tool, and you scale them and it works. So basically make... Good. Um, main one, as I always say, uh, scaling is, is more about risk management than just pushing budgets like crazy. So use cost cap CBOs, use Advantage Plus, use whatever works for you to scale, but make sure you're lowering risk by doing the things with the comments that I mentioned, using the post ID in every single one of your ads. When you duplicate, you use the post ID. You do it in the best day of the week, and you also don't push everything that you see has a good ROAS. Double check it with any tracking platform. So low risk is gonna give you a scale through time. And that's everything. Thank you so much. Okay, as you see, very technical, very much expertise in this room, so we're gonna kick it straight off with the questioning. Any questions? Yes. You scale your budget um, completely manually based on the analytics data? Yes, yes, every single day. Um, yeah, any experience with magic, for example, like the tool for waiting the budget and so on? Uh, stand Standard metrics that I look for, and I say, okay, when this happens, I scale. You mean? Yeah, but it's more AI, right? As I know, and I There's use it in the past. Yeah, yeah, no, whatever. Yeah, there are tools that do it, um, but to be honest, it's my main job, so uh, I do it myself manually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Myself manually, I have like my own rules in an Excel sheet, depending on the clients and their profit margins and the blended ROAS and what we're looking for, yeah. and then we double check. Even we have contribution margin manually. Manually, yeah. Go in there, but it, it, once you have the, the shortcuts, you by filter, by selection, order the columns, three clicks, you have the top winners. Push 20% on each, 25% on each, 30% on each, and... Yeah, Magix is a very good tool just to make it completely automatically, as I know. Good. So, I, I will take a look. Good. Thank you. Any more questions? Sergey. The following first slide, the comparison between like ads spend in 2022 and ads spend in 2023. You have a broken like budget on Google. Correct. Yes. And then budget on Meta. Correct. Uh, what are the two numbers? Uh, do you really switch the budget from Meta to Google, or do you just? invest more in Google and keep the same budget on Facebook? Usually the market of ad budget is growing uh, in general, so the absolute numbers are not so relevant in my opinion because you, you keep it relative. Yeah? But in general what we see that the clients are moving the budget. What we track with our events, when we can see the data, we, we track if they're moving the budget from one to another platform, so we check the overall budget, then we check the platform budget, and then we check if there is a, in a certain time frame a movement between having the overall budget at the same level, moving from platform to platform, that's what we measure. Like, this is basically another thing. Mark has maybe a question. Is this question answered? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a moving, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a moving thing. And you have to keep in mind, our data is relying also on European clients and American clients heavily, like in the combination. So we have the US market and the European market together are probably like 70%. Um, so there could be in the global market, also Asiatic market or like MENA market, it could be different. Yeah. Mark, you had a question? That's what you're doing is that Google, can you separate the reality inside between Google ads, search ads and YouTube? Yes, YouTube ads are growing. And YouTube ads are growing by a fast amount. Um, the problem is with YouTube ads, like in general, um, the, the inventory YouTube has is kind of limited, yeah, because you just have like pre-roll ads, you have, you have different kind of ads. But for example, as you saw on Instagram, what um, um, Manel was showing, they can come up with new communication channels. YouTube doesn't have a chat function, for, like to have a direct message chat or like push notifications. They can send it to you, but it's not the platform where you would react on because when do you use YouTube? When you sit down, have like 20 half an, minutes, half an hour, maybe sometimes in certain places, yeah? You sit down, watch the video, and that's it. And Instagram, you just open it up, have a look, quick look, one minute, two minutes, then stop. And what I can also say for customer retention, the average time spent on TikTok is the highest of any social media platform right now. The average user on TikTok spends around 11.6 minutes, yeah, just on TikTok which is maybe also due to the macro trend that they are just young users, so they have more time than people working. 
Yeah, but if you're selling to young guys or like younger target groups, I would definitely keep that in mind. So, so for example, Google is going, and within Google is YouTube, there is like yes, yes, Google YouTube is driving it. People switch from standard content to video content, short form, long form, short form TikTok usually, yeah, or reels on Meta, and YouTube the long one. Then there was another question, Bernhard, and then yeah. Uh, you are changing the accent? No, on the edit concept, you can set up a bunch of audience for the last two classes. Broad. Okay. Yeah. Just go broad because you have to think it's not going with pixel data, it's going with AI. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to anticipate who's going to buy your product. So I don't condition them with anything. And um, even my top winning Advantage Plus campaigns are with meta suggested ads. When you're creating the campaign, they suggest you like 10, 12 ads. When I just select those, it, that's my winning one right now, not myself putting the winners. So my conclusion there is the less you touch, the better, because that's the reason why Advantage Plus was created for you to almost not touch anything, just the budget. So that's uh, what I'm doing now. Pierre, yes. you had a question? Thank you, guys. What Thank you. What on YouTube Shorts placements? Will be crazy, in my opinion. Like, they're coming really hard. Um, we have one client who was growing organically in six weeks from zero to 100,000 subscribers with his YouTube channel. Yeah, um, It's more like an info product niche, which he used. And he was completely organically, and then he started using one track when he was, get, was getting paid. Um, I think all kind of short form videos will be completely, completely destroyed by marketing, <laughs> yeah, until we can't see them anymore for the next two years. 100%, because that's what marketers basically do. We use the stuff until nobody can see it anymore. We did it with email, we're doing it now with Facebook ads, yeah, <laughs> and we will for sure do it with short form video content, 100%. Any more questions? Amazing. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.